What's up, y'all? Kofi Kingston here, and I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks, depending on what that drink is, preferably non-alcoholic, you know? How's it going? I'm the Kelsey Quarry, Seamus. Soda. I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. Maple syrup. Bella. We are live. We are wrestling on the rocks. Kevin, you there? I'm Ke- here. Can you hear me? Ke- you, you. Hey! hey! You did it! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Happy Halloween! <laughs> yeah. You like my costume? It's so good. You nailed it. <laughs> Looks just like it. Welcome to the show where every show is our first show. Kev, we got a new listener who followed us on uh, Twitter and sent us a message the other day saying, uh, I heard your guys' uh, episode one. It was very good. I was like, I'm sure you heard it. <laughs> I know you heard it. I know you heard episode one. I know that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, if you're lucky, you might hear episode two. Yeah. Keep listening. If you like that episode one, wait till you hear the next episode one. Hopefully it gets better. Yeah, I was gonna say like just listen. Not that you not not that you'll love the next one, but the it, I mean it's it's coin toss. It's a flip coin. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we just we just make it happen every week. Kev, how you doing? I'm good. I'm here. I'm living. Awesome. That's good. That is good. You uh. What do you got in your glass? Uh, Redbird Lager from Four Peaks. Kind of local brew. For the Cardinals, baby. Yeah. Oh, that's the one, right? The red one. The red can? Uh, yeah, the red and white can. Oh, you can't see it. Like Redbird Lager, right? Yeah. No, I got the the bottle right here. I'll put it out. Yeah. I'll put it out right here by, by you. There you go. There you go. I actually got this bottle, which is funny. I got it. For you, because you hadn't seen them yet, and I went to a bar that had them, or it was a, actually it was a wing place that had them, and I was like, I'm, I ordered like a couple, and then when they came to come to the table, I was like, no, 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 I need, I need the can. <laughs> I gotta give it to my friend. Yeah, and then COVID hit, and it's like, well, now I got this. Now I've got this looming. Pre- this is gonna be your Christmas present three years running. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Gets better every year. Um, I think actually for me, I'm going to have some vodka and mix it with the agua fresca, a mango passion fruit. What I've been, what I was drinking for sober for October, I'm now spiking for November because it's a November you don't want to remember. The no remember November. Yes. You're having peanut butter on the rocks? It's screwball? Yep. Oh, that was just peanut butter with rocks. Yeah, she just legit put creamy peanut butter on ice cubes and threw it in a glass and just waited. Chunky or creamy? Depends on how long it's been in the glass. You gotta go with the chunky peanut butter. Yeah, especially if you're having it with rocks. It just wouldn't make sense otherwise. All right, I'm having it. Here we go. If there's one thing sober for October taught us. <laughs> so we pour heavy here. You had a hard time functioning. Yeah, man. The whole the whole mood of the show was down. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm I'm double checking. I don't think I had any news. I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to like sound like a jerk or something but i don't remember anybody dying this week which i thought was great um alex trebek alex trebek oh Oh, who is alex trebek who is alex trebek i got the question wrong yeah yeah uh well he was at one of the wrestlemanias he was at wrestlemania was it two or three so he's got a connection because in in real life everything is pro wrestling that much we know and yeah, he was uh, 
Yeah, that one was a little bit of a gut shot too, just to hear it. Because and then you don't even realize he's. They said he was like what eighty. I didn't even realize he was 80. And it, it also seems weird, though, because it's like, I feel like he's forever been around. And I feel like he's forever been, from my perspective, old. Because when I was a kid, I was like, oh, yeah, look at the old man with gray hair. Yeah. But for yeah, some reason, when they said 80, I was like, no way. Yeah. You know? You know when I was little, I thought he was 80. Was yeah. Like, and then now he, you know, he passed and they're like, oh, he's 80. And I was like, dang. Yeah. Well, you said it's a gut shot. <laughs> yeah, it was a gut shot. I was all like, there's just no way. And they said 80, and I was like, what? How? <laughs> but then you think about it in hindsight, yeah. and you're just like, well, yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, but yeah. it was, uh, that was definitely sad, actually. That was, that was awful. I don't have a great Alex Trebek story. I think it's the same kind of stuff everybody has watching it with your grandparents and your parents and all that stuff, and, and just the general camaraderie and th- Funly competition that you'd get when you'd watch Jeopardy at the house with each other, and everybody gets one or two right. And when they do, that's that's it. You're the smartest person in the whole house. All of a sudden, yeah, game over. Yeah, game over. <laughs> Forget it. So tears in our beers, <laughs> and we'll see you down the road, Alex Trebek. Did you have anything you want to say about Alex Trebek? Uh, no, just saying. Like you know, I just liked all his witty remarks he had at contestants when they were, you know, did something dumb or something, yeah. and. Yeah, he was a funny guy. That was good. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but yeah, tears in our beers. Cheers, Mr. Trebek. Yeah. Um, I did a really bad job this week of keeping notes. I've been getting worse at it all the time, and I feel like that last week I thought I definitely have to write notes throughout the week. I've got to be more prepared than this. And I didn't even like open up my iPad like once <laughs> except for to draw. So well, there was there was not much worth taking notes for. Um yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm going to go back and probably I got to start writing notes, man. I mean, especially when it comes to like new stuff, you hear something you go, "Oh, we should talk about that on the show and stuff," and I forget. Oh yeah. Uh I I couldn't find much. I was just scrolling through one of the news channels that I do not like or recommend. And I'm not seeing anything cuz the thing is is this one just like puts out so much just garbage. That it's really easy to filter through, okay, this is this is BS, this is BS, but since they're willing to put out literally anything, they'll usually end up grabbing the actual news and it's in there somewhere too. Um, I'm not even seeing anything on their stuff. So so I don't really have news uh, of which to speak of. Did, was there anything that happened news-wise or newsworthy that you wanted to throw out there? Uh, no, not that I can think of. Uh, WWE had a... a quiet uh, week. It was. Um, some, some furloughed people... And WWE were officially let go, and there was a little bit of hoopla online about that, one of which being Tony Chimmel. He was let go. So, yeah. Been there a long time. I don't remember the last time we saw him on air. I guess he did a lot of stuff backstage, uh, but he was finally let go. So uh, uh, we'll see you down the road, Tony. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't really have much else there. I will say that we sponsored Mission Pro Wrestling – this past weekend, November 6th, they had the tournament out of hell, and we ended up checking it out. It was really good. I like the idea. Like, if you watch this and you just think about, like, the future of women's wrestling, you feel really good about it. You go, oh, there's a lot here. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of love for it. There's a lot of potential. And there's a lot of people who are hitting those those strides already. So it was one of those things where it's like, well, if if the future of women's wrestling is in the hands of Mission Pro, we're going to be all right. You know? Yeah. Uh, they cool. do have another show coming out in December. Um, we're at this time not officially sponsors sponsored at this point, but we, we don't know if we're going to jump on or not. Not because they weren't great to us, because they absolutely were. They were. I would recommend everybody sponsoring them, especially if you want to get your name out there at all. They... They supported us a ton, and we got a few people looking at us, and I think we got a few people who, who checked them out because of us, and I think it was a mutually beneficial thing. So I have I have no issues with it as far as that goes. They were nothing but gracious, and talking to them was always easy. And we even sent Dork Chop to the show, dude, and they stacked him up with merch. Nice. Yeah, he, he was like, That's dude, awesome. they just – keep giving me cool stuff and uh <laughs> the shirts they had it's a tournament out of hell uh our logo's on the back of it he's he showed me it was really cool oh nice that's awesome yeah yeah 
Um, I cut you off though. What were you going to say about Mission Pro? Me? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Mm. I think you started to say something. Thanks. Maybe yeah. you were just repeating what I was saying. But I would say it's worth going back. If you guys did not check out Tournament Out of Hell, go ahead and check it out. You can find it at missionprowrestling.net was the easiest place for me to find the link to it direct. Title Match Wrestling Network is the is the, the network that's hosting it. But when I was searching under the Mission Pro stuff, it hadn't populated under their 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 name yet. So I think that it had, takes a while to index or something. So I watched it the next day. Um, yeah, I don't think I had... I don't think there's anything else I had news-wise at all. I just wanted to say that. Um, yep, I'm looking at these other ones. Oh, I have my notes still here about the Ironics. We are going to get that to stick. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't Ironics. encourage him, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, I think we're going to get in SmackDown if you want. Yeah, dive in. Dude, I've now officially on Twitter. This is what I, this is why I'm always going to be on Twitter. I've won a second raffle on Twitter. I got nice. the Ding Dong Hello Bailey shirt last time, and it had just come out. And I had just placed a WWE shop order, and I was like, "Oh, they just dropped this great Ding Dong shirt," and I just placed this huge order. And then I won a raffle online and through Twitter and won the Ding Dong shirt, and I was like, "This is tremendous." Then like three days ago, four days ago or something, maybe it was last week, they put out a role model sweater for Bailey. It's like in that stencil that she uses, that style. It says role model yeah. in the front and it has her Bailey logo on the back. And I was like, that's actually kind of nice. It's not like, it's not too, too flashy. It's not too big. Like, you know what I mean? Cause I, I've told you all the time though, I've got an issue with, I'm really particular about the type of shirts I like, you know, especially when it comes to wrestling. And this one, I was like, look clean. I won that raffle this morning. Nice. I'm getting that sweater now. I'm so excited, dude. And then here's the worst part. The person's all like, oh, hey, let me know your size. And I was like, you know what? I want to read about their description of it to see if it like fits small or athletic fit or anything. Because their sizes can be weird like that. I go to pull it up. Yeah. There's a brand new Bailey shirt on there they just released today, too. <laughs> it's long sleeve. Yeah. It's black with the gold stencil on the front that says the Bailey logo. And on the arms... One arm says ding dong. The other one says hello with a few O's. <laughs> so if you cross your arms, it'll legit say ding dong. Hello, dude. It's so fucking good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. I need another raffle. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, oh, though? I just, we... I just envision you with that shirt. Yeah. Just constantly fucking <laughs> Yeah, dude, just constantly with my arms over each other. Ding dong, hello We're like doing like the bushwalker walk. Ding dong, hello with the other one. Yeah. That's gonna be me, dude. I'm gonna do that right to your kids' faces too. <laughs> I'm gonna go over they're gonna say something to me. I was like, Oh, is that right? And then boom ding dong, one right to their face and the other one, hello with the other forearm. Kids are all flinching and stuff. It's like, dude, I wasn't actually gonna hit you, man. I just it's the shirt. <laughs> The sure, shirt. It made me do it. <laughs> yeah, but you know what is cool though, just from like a, a just a fan of the stars in general. I mean, when I was when Bailey was a hugger, remember we talked about how she just had like nothing for shirts, like no merch. She yeah. had like one shirt, and then every now and again they put out a, they put out one that was really weird with an awkward drawing, and that was kind of yeah. like it. So I do like that for her and for her sake that. They're really cranking it out right now, and the designs are cool. So you just like to see stuff like that, especially for your faves. With all that in mind, transitions into the opening segment of SmackDown, Bailey versus Sasha Banks. This was supposed to happen. This was supposed to be our moment. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that it kicked off the show. I was very surprised by that, too. But... It brought in something like 2.4 million viewers. I know we, I know we try not talk about ratings much, and I just throw it out there from time to time because I do think certain bits are interesting. And I thought this was one that was was neat. It was something like the highest rated post pandemic, uh, or since pandemic, since pre pandemic, since COVID, <laughs> is like the highest rated segment of any wrestling show at all. 
no wrestling segment right. has done as well as this segment did. And I thought that was fantastic. That was really cool. It's just it's a testament to these two women and their storytelling ability and and just what they're capable of in the ring. You know, yes. people were that hot for Sasha Bailey three that they just said, "Yeah, let's just do it. Let's do it right here." And everyone wanted yeah. to watch. So, uh, with that in mind, yeah, I, I thought it was kind of a surprise. But then when you think about it from that regard. And when it comes to like TV stuff, then I could get why you might want something that you anticipate to be highly rated to kick off the show because you hope to keep them, right? Yeah. But I mean, once Bailey's not on the show, there's no reason to keep watching, right? You just turn it off. So, oh, yeah, shot them. Yes, yeah, so, right? Shot them right in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbasses. Yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> uh, what'd you think of the match, dude? Uh, I wasn't a fan of it. Right, well, I think that was the show. Match. That's it. We're done. Yeah, I gotta yeah, get Clint back on. Yep. <laughs> <That's cool>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was a really good match, you know, and I wouldn't expect, you know, anything else from them. And, you know, it, when you see something multiple times, especially something, you know, good or great, you have to, like, kind of nitpick at certain things to find mm-hmm. things you don't like about it. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> And, you know, with me, the only thing I could say negatively was just their pace. Sometimes it looked like they were going a little too fast for their comfort on, like, their moves and transitions. But, you know, once again, like I said, that's just nitpicking. Overall, yeah. it was a great match and loved watching it and wasn't a fan of the outcome. I wanted – I found myself – when I, I know last show I was like, oh, I'm 50-50 what I want to see during the show or during the match. I found myself rooting for Bailey and being like, yeah, let's not have Sasha retain. Let's keep that streak alive. Yeah, I really felt like that we did a really good job of, of figuring out how you get there and plotting it out that way. If Bailey gets it back, Sasha takes a hiatus, and then and then you build towards, you know. I even said, I mean, I think, was it you or I who brought up the idea of, like, give it to Carmella next? The next program would be with Carmella. Yeah, the third. Yeah, well, we didn't even. We just said a, a third person, and like yeah. Carmella was, I think, the first person that came to mind, and we were just like, yeah, put it on somebody else. Then you know, but. Yeah. And everything yeah. there was right except for Bailey didn't win it, and then they ruined the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Uh, it was really cool. I liked a couple of the spots, dude. First off, that cross body that Sasha did off of the side onto Bailey looked mm-hmm. so stiff. I don't remember the last time I saw a cross body actually look that violent. Because yeah. most of the time it looks so cooperative and you just go, oh, it's a splash thing. This one looked like, Poof. <laughs> Yeah. Like Bailey and legit wasn't expecting it and just all of a sudden there's a human flying at you. That part of me also thought was like, was Bailey just trying to catch her? Which also would yeah. work if she was, if she saw it for a yeah. second, and then goes, "I'm gonna try and catch you," and then you still go down. It, mm-hmm. I don't know, it looked awesome. That and then the one where like Bailey's on her back on the outside of the ring or like on the ring apron, and Sasha came over to like dive at her, and Bailey kicked up and launched Sasha up into the air. Yeah, that was awesome, and the timing of that was crazy. Yeah, I think ba- or I think on that part, Sasha was supposed to hit the. The turnbuckle, because mm-hmm. you you know she went up and it looked like she was reaching for it like to do yeah. that spot and you know that fell short. But then again, just you know the accidental just launching her straight up in the air instead of launching her towards the turnbuckle, I think looked better. I think so too. Yeah, if Sasha I it was wasn't great. reaching for it. It would have been like it would have been awesome. Like she gets launched and then just whap, you know, falls on the outside. Well, the reaching for it, I thought, could play both ways, right? Because part of me thought, well, she's supposed to go that way. And then part of me also thought, like, well, also, if you're flying through the air, you might reach out and try to grab something to stop yourself or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, catch yourself, re, re, like, maybe try and slow yourself down. And also maybe just make a little bit of noise. But I thought I I, it was great. It was just a great match, I thought. Yeah. I had no complaints uh, other than the idea that I did think that the idea of Bailey retaining could have been awesome leading into an actual huge main event moment. Now the way that people are talking on the internet, it's so funny to me first off. Everyone's like, well, that's it. It's official. Bailey's ruined. Completely buried. I'm like, (laughs) okay. And they were saying this two weeks ago about Sasha. Yeah. 
yeah, two weeks ago, it's completely over. And then they're like, well, she hasn't had a credible victory in over 11 weeks. I'm like, what? And it's like, she's won a bunch in there. It's like, yeah, but there was like cheating or running away and getting disqualified and all that stuff. Like, yeah, she was a fucking heel. She's but, heel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just love it. And it's all like, well, she's completely not credible. She can't be credible again. They have to completely rebrand her. She needs to be a completely different character. And I'm like, okay, relax. <laughs> You know the first person that came to mind when they were going off on that was AJ. Oh, Have yeah. we ever thought AJ was not credible? No. Oh, and how many times does that guy lose? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, he loses a lot, and he loses a lot yeah. to like older legends. He he loses to he lost to Cena, he lost to Undertaker. The dude's losing all the time, and he has streaks of not winning. Dude lost a ricochet like twice. You know what I mean? Like, and God, if you think Bailey's buried, like you're just, I don't, you're, I don't know what your belief is in the stuff. It's she's literally the longest reigning SmackDown women's champion of all time. She can come back at any moment and be a credible threat to the next champion. She could, because she has so many credible victories already having a, a bad streak is not as detrimental or is is not equally detrimental as the success of having a hot streak goes, especially when it's that long. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It was just nuts. I loved it. It made me laugh. I love the pettiness, man. I'm just sitting here giggling, watching people fire off at each other. She's ruined! <laughs> <laughs> no! There's nothing you could do. And then it was like, well, now what are we going to do for WrestleMania? Now it has to be like Bianca and Sasha, right? And obviously Bianca has to win. You're like, oh, God, relax. <laughs> cool your tits, my friend. Yeah. Cool it. Relax. Take it easy. Take a breath. We like to fantasy book far out. Obviously, we, we booked from Friday to WrestleMania last week. <laughs> yeah. But when things don't go according to our plan, does not mean there is not another plan in store. You have a five-year plan, Kevin. Me and Kevin Owens, I've been booking for five and a half years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've even put up a video on our YouTube where I went through years worth of footage and clipped it up and stuff and been like, see, see this whole time. And then Kevin Owens said something this week. It really pissed me off. Good. It really went against my fucking, my video. <laughs> really made me mad it really felt like he watched my video and goes i'm gonna shut this kid down right now yeah fuck this guy you heard it what he said right i'm trying to think now you don't remember what it was because as soon as i heard i was like fuck (laughs) damn it kevin so he's sitting there and he talks about how jay uso's doing all this stuff because roman's making him this and that and he's doing his promo and it's great and he's all like look i've made a lot of mistakes but I've always done yeah. it under my own volition and my own free yeah. will. They've been my decisions. And I was like, stop! Yeah. <laughs> you're fucking my shit up. Yeah, you're, you're fucking it up for us, dude. You could have had Triple H at Mania. You just ruined it. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. As soon as you started saying that, I was like, oh, there it is. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was sitting here like <laughs> punching my leg. Just <laughs> one Throwing fucking time. The wall. Yeah, because every time he cuts a promo, I end up messaging like you or Gr Lunar who comes through from time to time, and I'm always all like, "Did you hear that? Still works. <laughs> Still works." <laughs> this time I heard it and I was like, <laughs> "Ruined it." Unless he's throwing, unless he's throwing people off. Trying to, he's just trying to he's hoping my video is not gonna because i thought about that too dude i honestly thought i was like well what if he's saying that yeah. just so it sounds like not but then when the whole triple h thing comes around it's all like trip then you then you find out triple h told him to say that tell them yeah. it's been your whole thing but he's, i think it'd be too hard con. yeah i think it'd be too hard to do that uh before we jump over to the <laughs> roman and jay and kevin though right before that happened Sasha Banks celebrating, as you would, yep. being victorious over the greatest champion of all time in the history of women. And now that you're a lesser than champion, of course, you're going to celebrate. 
just kidding. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then, and boom! Then, uh, out, out comes Lana with a super kick. Lana with a super kick in Liv Morgan's gear. That's right. It's Carmella. There was a lot going on in that moment when I watched yeah. it all happening. I was like, what is, who is, what happening? <laughs> But Carmella came back. She came back and she was said, I'm back, baby. Like twice. We rewatched it because a lot of people were online being like, you can't believe they changed her music. And they didn't play music. You don't know that yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they should. They rebranded her. They should change her music. Yes. And if, I mean, I don't understand contracts. I've made that very clear. <laughs> this being the first episode, I'll make it clear again. I don't understand contracts. But... If there is a contract dispute with the music and that is leaning towards why some of these people are getting random music changes, then I think the idea of changing her music now would be a good time to do it as any, you know? Yeah. And we were even listening to the music that they played for the um, vignettes with her. It's a pretty popping song. I think it could work. I think it'd be fine. I don't remember the music. Oh, let's see. Well, I mean, I don't know if it, I don't know if they'll shut us down. But I'll play it right now. <laughs> there we go. Hold on. Pulling it up. I had it pulled up, and then when I opened up the app, everything crashed. So now i got to pull it back up. All right, here we go. Are you ready to hear it, Kev? Let's do it. Are you dancing? Yeah, I was dancing. He's <laughs> okay. I was dancing to the song. I was feeling it. But it's a good song. That could work. Yeah. That could work as an entrance for sure. Oh, yeah. There's worse music for entrances right now, so. There's a lot worse in music entrances yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if that is her new music, I'm not mad. I'm not complaining. I liked the fabulous song that we used to have, but at the same time, I mean, it does that does feel a little old after a while. So yeah, yeah, change it up. Yeah, and she's she's not, you know, obviously we haven't seen her in a while, but all her little vignettes, she doesn't mention fabulous at all. Nope, she's so. untouchable. Yeah. What would be? What would happen if they basically kept the same exact music, but they spelled out untouchable to begin with? I thought, dude, I thought about that. <laughs> Instead of F A B, it's like U N C T R O T C H I B L E. U N C. I don't know how the word works. I don't have kids, man. I don't have to spell stuff. <laughs> I just tell Siri what I'm trying to say, and she I, spells it. Yeah, I got, I, I got out of correct. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> L-M-N-O-P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Touchable. I'm untouchable. Capiche? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it works. It works. But that does tell us we're getting Carmella leading into Sasha Banks for whatever the next pay-per-view is going to be. Probably Payback, which will be, I don't know. Survivor, well, after Survivor Series, I guess, right? But uh, it does mean we're leading into that, which is what we said before, that we wanted to see Carmella in the title picture right away. And so we are getting that yeah. bit, and I'm excited about it. I'm here for it. Yeah. She looked good. Her moves looked good. She was. She looked like she had a different attitude. I'm, I'm down. Dude, I, is, <laughs> is there any disputing at this point that SmackDown is like the best wrestling show on TV right now? Like, when you look at it next to Raw, it's almost like it's hard to believe that there's one creative team at this point. Yeah. Like, I, w I almost feel like the differences between Raw and SmackDown is a larger gap than the differences between Raw and AEW. 
Like I would believe that the same person was writing Raw and AEW before I would believe the same person's writing SmackDown and Raw because of like the difference in interest. You know what I mean? And the compellingness yeah. of it all. And even the hokiness of it all. I feel like all the goofy weird stuff's happening on Raw. And then over on SmackDown, everyone's taking themselves super serious and I'm way into it. Yeah, but then you got the Street Profits and Biggie on SmackDown. Oh. Yeah, I, just, I walked away from that. Yeah. That's Billy a good point. Ugh, man, that was bad, dude. Dude, that whole segment was awful. Street Profits yeah. and Billy Kay and Big E being brought down to their level. Yeah, I was waiting for Big E to hit him or something. Yeah, I thought he was going to do something to lay them both out and be away from it. Yeah. Uh, producer wanted to say something real quick. I feel like they keep throwing great, like, great performers in with Street Profits to see if maybe they'll rub off. Their magic will rub off on them or something. So, like, you had KO hang out with them for a while. And That's true. You had, now you have Big E. Like, you've got these power promos. You, these people who can deliver power promos are just keep trying to mix them with them, and it doesn't, it doesn't rub off. It's not, well, I don't know that it's even that. I bet you it's even more innocent than that. I don't know if you're getting into that. Um, uh, yeah, producer's saying that she thinks it had a lot to do with like the they we saw the street profits with KO we've seen them now with Big E we saw them with um the street or just the regular uh, it was uh, the rest of the new day at one point dude what are you doing over there me yeah drinking good you're like slurping that stuff like you're clump right now it's insane are you using like a straw with a hole in it i think it, i think it's, it might be the wrapper oh it might be the wrapper it might be the wrapper <laughs> Like you're lapping it up. Yeah, I was like, jeez. Like, I was like, dude, are you having a popsicle? Are you having like a melting popsicle right now? It's hot out. It's hot in the street. Yeah, yeah. He's dead. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I don't think that they're trying to get him to rub off. I think that it's just everybody actually really likes the Street Profits as people backstage. And I think they all, quote, want to work with them and stuff. And I, I think it's something as innocent as that. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I I don't think that anybody's made a Street Profits segment particularly enjoyable for me. It always seems to be bringing it down for me, but I don't know, man. This one was, like, really annoying. It was like, yeah, fuck, it was, dude. I think I walked out before it was over. Um, Let's see, I like the stuff with Jay and Roman. I liked the KOJ match a lot. Yes. KO's promo was awesome. We already kind of talked about just fire. Um, anything on any of those things you wanted to hit before you move on to the next bit? Uh, no, not really. Just, you know, it's interesting to see where they're going with it. And, you know, <clears throat> I thought, you know, I think, I think it's kind of cool how Roman's kind of directing traffic. Yeah. You know, Paul, do this. You know, hey, I didn't say you can do that interview. Hey, you know, go do this. Dude, they did such a good take. There was a camera shot that was, like, close in on Roman and Jay. And Roman's, like, really laying it on thick to, to Jay. And then it just kind of pans out. And Paul Heyman's standing behind Roman with his hand over his mouth and his eyes all, like, big, looking away but looking right at them, like, kind of side-eyeing them, like, oh, my God. It was so good. <laughs> I'll find the GIF. I saw someone put a GIF out and be like, this was a clever camera work. And I was like, this is also hysterical. <laughs> but it was so good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, who do you think is going to challenge Roman for the Tribal Chief? I'd like to see him put Tribal Chief on the line with somebody else. Like maybe a Daniel Bryan. Um, I guess actually we saw towards the end of the show, right? Someone get involved with Roman. Or am I wrong on that? I can't remember. I don't think I'm so. Through. Uh, maybe See, I don't not. think they. Corbin. I don't think they can. See, I just, I just don't think they can. Put that up for stakes. You know what I mean? 
I think that's where you go. I think you I think you put the stakes up. I think that Roman loses the tribal chief standing, and then you get like Baron Corbin versus Daniel Bryan for tribal chief down the line. <laughs> And he just goes, no, I'm just Samoan now. And then they have, like, fake tattoos on and stuff. Like, yeah. Where Samoa uh-huh. Joe steps in. Yeah. Samoa Joe's like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what do you think of the Lars Sullivan thing? People were talking about it. Um, It was it was all right. I wasn't paying too much attention to it when it was on. Because it's pretty much the same interview almost. Yeah. But, you know, he was talking about, you know, being bullied. Then he realized he could be the bully. You know, and then I can yell at him. You know, I thought that was a weird bit. That yell at the end really bothered me for sure. Yeah. Disappointed. Like, do it. Don't stop all the way to the top. Yeah, I'm filled up. Um, the only thing I, I think this whole segment might have been one segment too long. So I thought the one he did last week was great. Yeah. And then this one was just, excuse me, the same kind of crap, but almost on repeat on almost like he's telling a different story that wasn't, didn't go anywhere else, you know? Yeah, I thought it felt like that, too. I felt like this is the fourth time we've heard this basic thing. And and at this point, I don't think we need more sit-down interviews with scared people interviewing Lars. I think we can... Now, here's the other bit, is I don't know what you do next, except maybe just have a legitimate match or put him in... Have him bumping heads with somebody else, right? Have have somebody cut a promo on mm-hmm. him. Because at this point, we've seen him just run roughshod on everybody. We've seen him in like two or three just normal matches against sort of random people. And then now we've had these several. This is going to be like the third, maybe fourth. Because if you want to even count the run before this that he got injured on, it's like the third or fourth time that we've just put a mic in front of him to tell this same type of story again. I think we get it. I think we get where he's where he's coming yeah. from as a character mentally. Like You just kind of have to move forward with it now and let the rest of that stuff Hash out through promos later, yeah. little bit by bit. You know what I mean? You remind me of this. and oh, the, Someone who's haunted by their past isn't going to just sit there and make every single mic a therapy session. But they'll yeah. bring it up when they lose their cool. You know what I mean? Do you think it's because of Fox? Because before, was, he, was it on Fox? So do you think they're know. just trying to do it for a new audience? Uh, maybe, but even then... Like you said, the last one covered the same ground as this. The only thing with this one is it made it even more weird. He screamed really loud that actually like popped their mic. And then he was doing the whole interview shirtless. Yeah. But I like not in his gear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I went to my next. Yoga. Yeah. I had a meeting at work and I just cosplayed as Lars. And I was like, it's a wrestling thing, guys. Relax. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Shh. Yeah. Shh. You're not going to call me a freak, are you? (laughs) (laughs) But, like I said, I just think when you you have back-to-back, almost same exact promos, it's like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Oh. 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 (laughs) Hello. I can breathe fire now, dude. I think with this with with Lars, this is the other thing. There's a lot of people who don't care about him right now. A lot of people who don't want him around. A lot of people who don't like him. He's only gonna have so much heat for so long, and all of that internet stuff aside, if he's got heat, that's what the wrestling world wants, right? There's people talk about the difference between go away heat and not real heat or heel heat, and I think that in the wrestling world that we've always known there's very little difference as far as the booker seems to be concerned they don't care if you want them to go away as long as you don't go away doesn't matter if you want them to and and the thing is is a lot of people keep talking about them and they keep throwing this hate at them and it's just fueling that so if you really truly don't like them don't talk about them i think that at this point the character is as fleshed out as it needs to be you have to start doing something with it because no one's going to care about this stuff this isn't going to get people 
this isn't getting people talking about what you want him to talk about. If you want him to get like, I think now he's got to be in some sort of story. Someone has to say something to him or cross him the wrong way and get in a program with somebody, somebody that's going to take a month. I don't know who, I don't know how or what. Cause I can't think of any of them that I'd be all that interested in. You know what I mean? Cause even, yeah. I mean, think about if they were trying to build big E out, off of Lars, like what if they just wanted Lars as a speed bump for big E to show how, how good big E is. Mm-hmm. I don't think I want to see Big E cutting power of positivity promos on Lars Sullivan. You know what I mean? Unless they're trying to get away from the power of positivity. I don't know. Drew McIntyre cut that promo this week. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> it was. Dude, the other thing people are really hating on, Buddy Murphy and Aaliyah. People are See, not liking this. They're not happy with it. Outside of it, you know, being too long and boring, I really don't care. Either way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of how I feel yeah. about it is is that I, I don't have a, a passionate hatred towards this thing just because I think that this isn't a stretch of the imagination. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that happens all the time, and the family is adamantly against it, and so are you as a viewer. So doesn't that make you on the faces side? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like, I can see people's problem if she was, like, 15. Yeah. But, you know, she's an adult, and like you said, it, it this, this kind of stuff happens in real life. Yeah. And you're taking the side of the baby faces. Like, Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like you said, other than it just being not, like, dragging on forever without going anywhere that I'm truly interested in, I'm not ultimately bothered by it in, in another way. I didn't like seeing Seth Rollins out there again. I didn't want anything to do with that. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Seth and Otis had a squabble. I don't know what the fuck they're doing with Otis now, man. Like, how are you going to strip away the money in the bank briefcase and then – put him on a singles run after that. Like what's, what's yeah. the top you've already stripped away the top. You've already said like, Hey, don't get too invested in this guy. Cause we don't believe in him. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, yeah. Yeah. I just don't know. Like you said, I don't know what they're doing with them. I think the whole thing with taking the money in the bank, away from them or from him is like I said it felt like they to me at least they're like oh we made a mistake there let's change it yeah because even yeah. even like the way he won where it like fell into his hands it was like that's yeah it's frustrating yeah I didn't like that win either I mean we complained about it then when it happened and there's a lot of people that loved it and then a couple of weeks later they were like you know, they were over it already. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was such a bummer. Otis was such a hero of the of the empty arena era. And now that we got Thunderdome, they're all like, sorry, Otis. <laughs> we uh, we had a big thing for you when there weren't any fans' faces anywhere. Now that fans' mm-hmm. faces are out there, you got to step aside. So weird, man. Well, then, and, and then the other thing, too, is, you know, you separate him from... Tucker, and yeah. Poor Tucker is just a freaking jobber going after the twenty four seven and that whole melee. And he's, and he's like, looking well, so rough, dude. Yeah, dude. Like he looks like he's in better shape. Tucker looks like he's in better shape. Producer said she feels so sorry for Tucker right now, but also Tucker was for one wearing like Victoria's Secret sweatpants last week, and then this week he was wearing gear that didn't fit him, like hand me down gear. <laughs> yeah. And you're all like, oh, why this guy's it, getting more and your, more indie. Yeah, why does your gear say diesel on it? Yeah. <laughs> it says easel. Like yeah. it, the D falls yeah. off. It's just It's my easel gear. It's fine. <laughs> and even, you know, even when, you know, the whole thing where Tucker costs Otis, the money in the bank. It, it seemed, seemed like that was going to lead to something. And then they just kind of went yeah. their separate Even though they're on separate brands, it's like, 
Yeah, it's just weird and confusing. No payoff. And then Tucker tweeted out today. He said like something like four years with uh, with a tag team with Otis, zero championships, two weeks on my own, two championships. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. <laughs> the dude's like totally selling the fact that he won twenty four seven twice on Monday. Uh, in two championships in one move. Yeah. Dude, that fucking. Uh, uh. You know what I wonder too? <laughs> like, did you, you didn't get the chance to see Full Gear, right? No. We're in. Uh, we're not going to talk about it on this show necessarily, but the finish for Darby versus Cody was that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was the twenty four seven finish. Too. Yeah, the uh, back and forth, boom, 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 just rolling in a ball over and over again. That was the finish for Cody and Darby. And part of me is all like, no, they're not making fun, are they? Because <laughs> then you're like, Gulak and Tucker is doing it for 24 7. I was like, see? See? It's funny. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, there was like three or four rolls in the. In the Darby Cody one, and it was one, two, oh, one, two, oh. But with 24 7, like, what if you just get the belt every time? We'll do the same thing, but yeah. actually get to three every time. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, part of me wonders. <laughs> Maybe I'll find oh, the clips and put them be... side by side. Dude, that has to be a direct response. <laughs> Dude, I'm here for the pettiness, but we... there's a certain level where you just got to go. I also think that we all live in one one reality where I think that with much with like comedy where it's all like, hey, you everyone's going to have a joke about a family member or or being on an airplane because we all live in one reality. I do think that the idea of constant roll up victories has been done before. I think that's just the one reality thing, but it did happen suspiciously close and it just made me laugh. Grim Reaper. Well- but you think that you think it was intentional? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because when was the last time we saw the counter of the small package? You know, for the other guy to get a pin attempt. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I'm sure it's like happened, said, but it, it, it happened at like a week apart. I think hundred yeah. percent. I mean, two days apart. Graham Reaper, just joining us in the chat. Tell us what you think. Uh, anybody wants to be in the chat? And be a part of the show and derail the show. This is the place to do it. Twitch.tv slash Wrestling on the Rocks. You can find all of our links at WrestlingOnTheRocks.com for all of our stuff. Uh, Grim Reaper, uh, he says, hey, sky's the limit for two champ Tucky now. (laughs) Grim Reaper, (laughs) we're talking about SmackDown. We're talking about Otis and it talked about Tucker. I brought up the fact, if you saw Full Gear, you noticed that the end of Cody versus... um, uh, Darby was a small package into small package into small package into small package. That was the same way Tucky won both of his titles on Monday Night Raw. Do you think the 24-7 championship is changing hands between Gulak and Tucky that way was a fucking jab at AEW? Because I think it's possible. Um, let us know what you think, <laughs> and we'll get back to it. Kev, I really liked the triple threat of the women on SmackDown, Ruby Natty and it was it Zelina or Billy K? Zelina, yeah. Zelina. Zelina. Billy K was in the last one, I think. Um, yeah, Ruby, Natty, and Zelina. I thought this match was fantastic and it had a really yes. nice end. I loved that I was, finish. I, yeah, I was I was surprised by it because I I thought they were gonna have Natty win so that her and uh, Lana, you know, would have their face to face during Survivor Series. Mm. And then, you know, and then when that didn't happen, I was like, and don't get me wrong, I, I have nothing against Ruby. I'm glad she's on the team. She's a great talent. But, you know, when they first announced the match, I was like, all right, Zelina's not going to make the team. And I was like, I doubt they'd give it to Ruby. So Natty's the, the clear choice, at, you know, at the beginning of the match. But, are they actually on two separate brands, though? Who? Lana and Natty? Did they actually get split? 
Yeah, because remember, Lana's the fifth member of Team Raw. I know, but I thought that Natty was just on SmackDown trying to get on the team for some weird reason. I don't know why it didn't click to me that she was actually drafted to the other side. Now I'm way confused because no, you know that Lana and Natty have a bunch up. of matching gear. Yeah, yeah and then they had that split up, and then they switched them. Sorry. Yeah, but Natty in this match debuted Lana gear that she's never shown before, where it was the stripe stuff that Lana has on Natty's gear. And then this, and then Lana for the past several weeks has been coming out with newer and different gear with hearts and that's black and pink. Like yeah. they look more like a team than ever. It's really confusing me, man, but you bring up a good point. They're just not on the same show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But I did really like this match. I really liked the finish. I like the idea that they're both in the in the submission, and Natty gets frustrated. Like, well, we can't win this way, obviously. So as soon as she steps up, Ruby cranks back. Selena quits, and R- Natty just goes like, "Bitch!" Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> See, I thought it was. I thought it was. Uh, Natty didn't realize that Selena was there. I mean, that uh, Ruby was there. And I, I thought, I thought she was frustrated at Ruby being there and was all like, we can't win like this. And was like, got out of the submission to come around to hit Ruby and took too long. Mm. See, I, I was thinking of it that she didn't see her there. And I thought they were supposed to like play the, uh, like she thought she won and then turned around and saw Ruby there. <clears throat> I, guess I thought it would have been great again. if Ruby like taps her taps her leg or something like that and she thinks Zelina taps and then uh, you know she gets up and <clears throat> but that's what that was my impression I could be totally wrong yeah the impression I got was that Natty looked back and saw Ruby and was like well for one that's going to make my move not successful and two if Zelina taps out nothing happens because now we're both in a hole so as mm-hmm. soon as she let go of the legs Ruby cranked back real hard and that's when Zelina was like I'm going to break and taps and that's when Natty yeah. was all like God damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, and Grim Reaper agrees in the chat. Three solid workers, very good match, and as a fan of Ruby, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of Ruby. I'm really excited to see her doing a little bit more and getting the spot on the team. I don't know what it's going to mean afterwards because that's the other thing that's really weird about Survivor Series. They keep doing all this brand supremacy stuff. They've been doing it for years. No one's ever been catapulted out of this. No. You know what I mean? The closest think- we got was Keith Lee looking really good last year, and then... It's just been what it's been and, since then. And Rhea. But I hated last year where NXT just steamed rolled and, you know, that was that. Yeah, I didn't like it at all, to be honest. I didn't like it one bit. So but, when they said that NXT wasn't going to be in, I thought that was really good. I was excited. Yeah. But see, the, thing I, the, the other thing I don't like is that they, uh, ever since, the you know, the brand split, and it's Raw versus SmackDown. There hasn't been uh, anything on the line. Everyone's fighting to be team captain. Everyone's fighting to win. But, you know, you, you have nothing to fight for. Yeah. You know, outside of bragging rights. And I think, you know, I think they should even say, like, hey, you know, this could be lead to a title opportunity down the road or something if you survive on the team or whatever. But... You know, because even the champions versus champions, you know, those are pointless. Yeah. It's always cool to see stuff, but literally nothing comes out of it afterwards. Yeah. Even bragging rights. No one brags afterwards. Yeah. Well, even, you know, I didn't like how they did it. I think it was last year. It might have been the year before about uh, who would get the 30th spot in the Royal Rumble. But even if they said, hey, whoever's brand win Survivor Series, you know, since they have the whole tally, yeah, is at least guaranteed the 30th spot, you know. <clears throat> so, you know, hey, if SmackDown wins, 30th spot's going to somebody on SmackDown. Yeah, maybe. I think that'd be a little complicated. Wasn't last year the way they did it, wasn't it, Um, the winner of the Mixed Match, match Challenge? <clears throat> they got their 30th spots? Yeah, That's yeah. how Carmella and, and Truth got in? Oh, no, that was the year before yeah. that. So it was 2019, 2020 around Wolves and Drew won. Yeah, I don't know. 
But yeah, nothing ever happens of it. Nothing ever comes of it. Nobody ever even brags about it. They always like it's bragging rights and brand mm-hmm. supremacy, and then nobody does those things. No one says we're the better brand. We clearly won yeah. Survivor Series, and no one says, "Hey, we're we, we're bragging because we won Survivor Series." It, everyone just moves on. It's just like this weird month where, like you said, it's all these matches revolved around being on the team, and you want to be on your team on your on your show's team. But for what and for nothing, and then and then a month later, it's like, okay, now let's get back to business. It's a really weird. It almost feels like, like winter break, you know. Yeah, well, see, and, you know, it's crazy, but I think Survivor Series would almost be a better AEW show, considering they have rankings and their uh, their win loss records matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because you know, I could shake up their whole rankings. Like it, you know. Yeah, it just it just bothers me that they don't. Like you said, it's just bragging rights, basically, and that's it. And it's like, why? Yeah. You know, uh, why is... But I was just going to say, why is, you know, why is everyone giving their 100% when you're not getting anything out of it? To... Yeah. Like, especially the champions versus champions matches. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, is nobody ever talks about those. I mean, the closest we got to someone talking mm-hmm. about it was uh, Charlotte and, and Ronda. Yeah, well, the yeah. other one I liked, too, before was AJ and Brock. Yeah, which we all like and fans talk about from time to time when talking yeah. about Brock matches, but the shows never bring it up. Mm-hmm. You know? But, I don't know, it is what it is, I guess. The only other segment on here that I thought, uh, well, that we haven't really covered was uh, Baron and Ray. And I thought Baron Corbin and Ray Mysterio did an awesome job, dude. I love those guys together. Yeah, I, I completely forgot Baron was on... SmackDown. I was really excited to see him because he's he got drafted to SmackDown. And we haven't seen him since then, so I was really happy to see him back. Big fan of the King. Mm-hmm. Um, all hail. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's kind of all I had to say about about SmackDown. We can move on to Raw if you're ready. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, Monday Night Raw opened up. With uh, Miss TV, didn't it? Yeah, Randy Orton and well, uh, Ms. Ms. Morrison were out there, and they're they're talking a bunch of stuff, and Randy Orton comes out and interrupts and just like eviscerates them, and tells mm-hmm. Morrison that he left to go to the Indies and stuff and minor leagues and all that. I loved that man, so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Grim Reaper Andy's brings Andy. up a good point about Survivor Series. Daniel Bryan used his loss against Brock Lesnar to beat the old cell or beat the old self out of him to drive his Planet Champion storyline. That's true. He he used uh, that Brock match mm-hmm. to be the the next big thing for him, so that was good. Um, yeah. but I was kind of like little, kind of little. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that was a very short run too, because and everyone loved the Planet Champion, the belt, everything, and then they're like, all right, we're done with that. Let's go. Yeah. No. And then he comes back, he goes, you guys brought back the old me. <laughs> okay. Um, dude, Randy Orton is so good. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy how good he is on the mic and stuff. And then I even love that spot with him and with Adam Pierce in the back where he gets all in his face. <laughs> yeah. Grabs, grabs him, you know, by the shirt and stuff like that. And then calms down and kind of, Fixes his shirt and stuff like that for him. Yeah, loved it. You go tell the... He didn't say powers that be, but he was real close to, I think. Yeah. Um, dude, I'll say this, though, about Raw. I was looking at the, the lineup, because the, they, they email you a lineup of what they have going on, and and I sighed when I looked. I was like, ugh, this is our segments we have to look forward to. <laughs> It, but I thought all in all, it, it turned out to be a pretty decent show. I liked the stuff with AJ and the entire Survivor Series team. I didn't think I would. I thought I was going to really dislike the stuff with them all together. But I don't know, man. I actually, this is the, the only time I've really liked uh, Riddle on the mic. I liked his little stuff back and forth. <laughs> I like Seamus getting in his face and calling him dopey. Yeah. I just thought... <laughs> No, I thought they were all good. Um, let's see. Elias, Jeff Hardy, Matt the Riddle nicknames. wasn't a bad match. The what? The nicknames, yeah. I said the nicknames. That was awesome. <laughs> I thought I was gonna going to hate that bit. 
Go ahead. <laughs> I like Riddle. I've always liked Riddle. And I like how they do the slow-mo with the, the trunkless, the sandals. Uh, I know you've always hated that he does yeah. that. And now they're doing slow-mos with it. I love it. Because like you said, that reminds me of when we were younger and I'm on my trampoline and I'm doing that shit. <laughs> you know who else does but, stupid um, stuff you did on trampolines? Is Angelo Dawkins. No. Dude, watch the way he runs in the ring. The dude looks like he's you on a trampoline when you were fucking 13. He does that move where the guy's in the corner and he, like, runs towards them the only way he can run and then, like, stands and jumps into it, like, does a spin and then hits them with a... With, yeah. It looks like you on the trampoline being like, Woo! It's like a flip. Yeah. Except you actually did flips. He's not even doing flips. <laughs> no, dude, it looks so bad. Every time I watch, I see that I'm almost like, well, see, he looks like a kid. Every, a you see, every kid. time he does that, Gassy. I think of, <laughs> yeah, I think that he's doing that for uh, because of his basketball background. Does he have a basketball background or just wear basketball shorts? Because those are different things. Yes, I don't know. I thought he had a basketball background. I think he wears basketball shorts all the time. I think that's his basketball background. Well, well maybe, whatever. He wants to be a basketball player. Yes, like every kid on the trampoline does, too. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Moving the trampoline under the basketball hoop, that was the greatest. Yeah, such a good move. Such a good move. And now yeah. he's adopted it. He was like, wait a second. I think I could do my trampoline tricks here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But, but – um, Go ahead. So real quick, since we were talking about the Survivor Series team, and I was going to bring it up, but um, do you think Lars Sullivan goes to the SmackDown Survivor Series team? Or is it too early for him to be against the other monsters? Because SmackDown's Survivor Series team looks tiny compared to Raw's. I mean, that would make sense. I wanted to say no because I don't think you'd have Lars around Get buried. other people. Yeah. But I do think that they could – I mean, I don't know. I guess that would be tough, right? Because how do you do it? How do you get out of it? Like, do you have Lars actually eliminate Braun Strowman but not Keith Lee or – do you have him eliminate both or, so he just looks like a crazy powerhouse? But then how do you believably have him lose to to like an AJ later? You know what I mean? Because he's going to have to. Yeah. Well, unless they do one of the double count out things with the big guys like they've done recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was awful when they did that in the Hurt Business one. Grim Reaper's got a mm. question for us. I don't know. I don't know how to get out of that one, but I, I do think that there's a good chance now that you mention it, he could end up in there, but I think it would complicate things more than help things personally. Uh, Grim Reaper well, says, I do you guys see... Do... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think they can do the angle where it's like, hey, we need you. We need you. We need somebody mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. You know, and then... I think getting him into the match would be easy do. to do. I think once yeah, booking yeah. the match and getting out of the match without having Lars look or any one of those guys without it ruining somebody, I think would be really hard. But then again, fuck it and goes back to the back. Yeah. But I mean, when you think about it though, um, who were the two dudes that we saw in the last two years got completely buried in survivor series, Walter and Samoa Joe. And are we any less scared mm -hmm. of Walter and Samoa Joe today than we were then? We are more scared yeah. than ever of both of them. And Joe's probably been in yeah. less wrestling matches since then. Yeah. And I'm more terrified of Joe now than I was then. And so at the time we were all like, well, that was a w shitty way to just crush Samoa Joe and get him out of there. Mm -hmm. Joe might have just been like, this is a messy match, guys. Just I would let me go home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Walter, remember during the NXT stuff, we're like, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. And he went out there and just got fucking clobbered by like Roman and then left. And then we're all like, what the fuck was that? But then, Ro but then Walter <laughs> yeah. puts on this match two weeks ago. Where you're concerned that he just murdered somebody in the ring by slapping them to death. And you're all like, dude, he can't do jail time. That's why. He'll kill everyone in prison. You know? Yeah. Like, it's not safe for the other inmates. Um, Grim Reaper has a question for us. Do you guys see a title switch next week between Orton and Drew? So it's Drew versus Roman at SummerSlam. I think there could be a cheap finish. And then they have the payoff at WrestleMania. 
What did I say? Survivor Series. SummerSlam. Right. Dude, that's what SS is. SummerSlam. <laughs> but yes, I, I I thought they shed light on that like soon after Randy won the championship. Because that, for a while there, he was the, they were yeah, he was the only one that was saying if he's still holding the title, it's going to be him versus you know Roman. And I thought immediately they're like, oh, they're just going to give it back to Drew, which then in turn like, well, why do that at all? But I hope not. But I have a feeling that's where where they're going with it. Well, I think first off. This might be a jerk thing to say, but do you care at all to see uh, Drew versus Roman, even at WrestleMania, down the line? No, not at all. I have no desire to see them in a ring together at all, Yeah. whether it's Survivor Series, WrestleMania, or anything. I get that they're pushing the two of them to the moon, and they think those are the two biggest stars, but I have no desire to see Roman and Drew in a ring. None. Mm Mm-hmm. And I like both of those wrestlers, and I want to see them do a bunch of stuff. I want to see them both in more matches. I've got no desire to see the two of them together. Um, But I think in their eyes, they're looking at, I don't don't think Roman and Randy mm -hmm. would be the closing match of Survivor Series. It would not. Headlining match. And I think they're like, oh, look, we can do Roman and Drew because everyone loves Drew and really not many people do. And I think that's what they want as their marquee headlining match. Maybe. Um, Green Reaper says, what would you do with Roman versus Orton as an alternative? Because he was saying have a cheap finish so that way you can get the payoff later. I don't think you can do the Roman versus Drew and, and have a cheap finish. I think you could with Randy Orton. And I think you could with what I'm afraid will happen is that during this match coming up this next week, that Drew and Randy will be so beaten down that it'll be the perfect time for Miz to actually cash in, and then you get Roman and Miz at Survivor Series. But who would want that? It's champion versus champion match. Because this is supposed to be their second WrestleMania. Well, their second biggest show. Is it? Survivor Series? I always thought Survivor Series was supposed to be the second biggest show. I thought it was SummerSlam was the second biggest one. To me, Survivor Series is the is the most throwaway of all the big four. I'm the least interested in Survivor Series than almost any other pay-per-view of the year. I think lately, considering they put Money in the Bank as their big five, I think yeah. Survivor Series finishes fifth in that list. Yeah, Absolutely. Especially, especially lately, you know the way it's been. There hasn't been, you know, factions versus factions, and and I always hate, you know, just off topic real quick. I always hate how they say a traditional five on five Survivor Series match. When I was young and I was a kid watching, it was always four versus four. If I pull up all the old rosters, is that what it's going to show, or are you going to look like an idiot? I might look like an idiot, but I'm pretty sure it's always been four versus four. <laughs> <laughs> there is no telling I won't look stupid but uh, Grim Reaper says because he goes oh okay because was- Miz would be a lame duck and I agree uh, I do think that, that you put Roman with Miz this is what I think is that because Orton and Roman has a lot of story behind it and people would know it would be a good match I don't know where you get out of it but I think that Drew and, and Roman is that big marquee match but also do you want to pull the trigger now or later uh, I think with Miz, you can just have Miz go out there and be an idiot and have Roman not having it. And then Roman can turn it into a whole other thing where he's like looking at Jay being like, you see? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then Jay's just all like, oh, cool. Oh, didn't these guys win at Mania? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's kind of how I feel. But uh, you... you you can uh, go back to the, your Ford Man tag if you want. Hmm? Were you, you going to say something else about Survivor Series or something? No. No. Good. Yeah. Uh, I, that's what I think. I think Miz, I think this is where Miz actually cashes in. But I don't know that, I don't know that that will happen. And I also think this is the way you keep Drew away from Miz cashing in. Because that's Drew's whole thing is you're not going to cash in on, on Randy. But if he cashed in on the two of them, then... Yeah, maybe. 
But then which one does he pin? Well, he has to pin the champ. Not if he interjects himself in the uh, triple threat, right? Because didn't they do that yeah. with... with Seth? Yeah, that's how they got away with it with Seth. Rock? I mean, they could. Yeah. They could, but I think that... It would be a sneaky, like, rat thing to do, like, after the match. and. I also think that Randy Orton, although I think Randy Orton's, like, protects himself better i think that he had, has less to lose than be pinned by by orton or by miss i think drew would look like an absolute idiot getting pinned by miss and i think people would just laugh if miss pinned randy you know what i mean yeah but no, do you think do you think the fiend gets involved on monday that'd be good what if i mean i could i could see fiend getting involved Randy losing it, and then Fiend and Randy going back and forth for a minute. What if? I'm okay with too. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. What if Miz goes to cash it in? They ring the bell, and then Bray Wyatt comes out and pins Randy Orton and gets the title that way. And then you get R- Roman and Bray in Survivor Series, which has a load of story, anyways. And they kind of miss the boat on anyhow. Although to be honest, I'd rather to see Roman and Bray at WrestleMania than than Drew and and, and Roman. I don't, that, I don't think they can do that though. No. Bray also, goes, well, I well they do so much weird there, fucking I shit though. They do weird stuff. So if they ring the bell and then and then Miz goes for it, but the lights go out and then they come out and Miz is laid down somewhere, and you just have Bray on top of Orton and he just screams at the ref, cow. You know what I mean? Then you could be like, oh, this doesn't make any sense, but here we go. You know? <laughs> like, And Green Reaper says, and it would be 10 years to the month that Miz cashed in on Orton the last time if he does go in the cash in on this on this, um, this coming up raw. So, I mean, that's my guess. I'm going with Miz to cash in on Monday and get the title, and then we get Miz and, and Roman. But then I don't know where you go from there. It makes me care. I don't know. I'm happy to see Elias back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like the idea of it. I'm trying to figure out ways to make Drew more interesting to me because I'll tell you this: I think Drew is the best heel on Raw. By Every far. time he comes out, I, I hate they, him more. They need to pair him with Sheamus. No. Oh. They need to just make this Sheamus and Drew tag team, and they'd be behind it. Every time oh, they're yeah. on the screen together going back and forth. I'm like, all right, cool. I can like this. And then Drew does something stupid. And then says something stupid. Yeah. And then it's like, Ugh. Drew is the worst part of those segments. Every time him and Seamus start saying something you're like, this is cool. This is cool. And then Drew starts dancing. Cause he thinks he's funny. And you go, Oh, okay. you're so I fucking hate you. Vest. Yeah. During the match, he put on uh woods. He put on woods, his vest. And people are like, he looks a little weird to be Big E. And you're like, stop. I didn't catch that, but that's stupid. It happened during a commercial break, and then they tweeted out <laughs> pictures of it. Because I was in the Thunderdome, yeah. I saw it. Because I'm in the Thunderdome every Monday night, Raw. I am Thunder Marsh, Thunderdome VIP. You're welcome. <laughs> Thunder Marsh just doesn't have a nice ring to it. Mm, I beg to differ. <laughs> Do you prefer ironics? No. Mm-hmm. Ironics. <laughs> mm. yeah. Yeah, I, I think this marsh is always on thunder, if you ask me. Dude, what do you think of Ricochet from what? down under? Yeah, the thunder from down the under marsh. Thunder from down under. <laughs> that has uh, a ring to it. <laughs> it's got a nice ring. <laughs> Uh, Ricochet versus Mustafa, dude. What do you think about what's going on with Retribution right now? I'm digging it. I really like. Did you get to see those clips I sent to you guys about where where he was? Mustafa Ali was, or Mustafa was was Mustafa. cutting the promo, saying, "Imagine that." He goes, "Imagine why I uh, put ridiculous masks on people so they could know what it was like to be judged by their appearance." Imagine that I would give them all stupid names so they would know what it'd be like to be made fun of and judged by your name. Before they got to know you, it was like, can you imagine that? Like, also, yeah. like, oh, so good. 
It's really good, dude. And then yeah, on was, After the Bell, yeah, they he did an it. interview too where he said that there's so much <laughs> art in the Retribution storyline that he thinks people are missing it actually. So that's why he's starting to break it down a little bit more and more on social media. Uh, go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah. No, no, yeah. I was just saying, yeah, I saw those clips and, you know, it is good. I just, I don't know. Retribution came in with such a bang and kind of just went flat for a little bit and I think they're struggling to get back up. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the match between Ali and uh, Ricochet was awesome. Dude, it was so and good. I was actually going to... I was actually going to bring that up. When was the last time Ricochet won a match? Yeah, it's been a while. Because I feel like he's over Ricochet now. Yeah, it's been a while for what he's been doing on national TV. Here's the other thing is I thought was really funny. A lot of people were talking about how fresh it was and new to see Ricochet and Mustafa Ali have a match together. And they're like, it was so good. They had so much chemistry. They worked so well together. Can't believe we've never seen this pairing before. Well... As Thundermarsh, I can tell you that I used to go to the Thunderdome early. I used to be first in line for Thunderdome all the time. So I actually used to watch main event every week. And for five weeks in a row, Ricochet and Mustafa Ali had matches against each other. And I was like, here we go again. Let's do it. So by the time I saw this one, I thought, oh, here we go again. They always deliver. And everyone else was like, this is new. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? I've seen this match five, six times. I never realized that they were still doing main event. I know. I don't even know where it <laughs> airs, dude. I feel like it's straight to network. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I but I I like it. I do. I'm. Do you think Ricochet joins Retribution, dude? Yeah, I I would like that. I think it'd be pretty I think neat. at this point, with just kind of being, well, yeah, especially, you know, like I said, he's lost, it seems like, forever. Hasn't yeah. won in forever, I should say. Um, I think at this point, he either, you know, does the whole adage, you know, you can't beat him, join him. But he's kind of like this weird free agent in between these two factions right now. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I would... I, I would, I would, you know, I've been saying it, you know, from the beginning, and I think you have too, that I want to see the Hurt Business and Retribution keep gaining more members. You know, I don't yeah. want it to get, like, NWO status, but, you know, if they were each, like, seven, eight deep, like, that'd be cool. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. I'd be really good. I think that they're destined to, to be together because Retribution uses the same style R that Ricochet uses on his gear. So his gear's already ready. Oh, really? Yeah. Put the two together, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah their, their new logo, the R with the flag, looks a lot like Ricochet's R. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and that was the other thing. I was hoping for a lot more than that R with the flag. I don't know what I wanted. I liked the spray paint thing. And when I saw the flag, I was like, okay. But yeah, I see what you mean. Like, I don't want it to be as busy as the Inner Circle logo. I still don't like that. That still looks ugly to me. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how busy you want it to, to be. I don't know. I feel like minimal's good. Uh, let's see. Go ahead. Even just a spray painted art. Yeah. Yeah. No, it could be good. Uh, Lana went through a table for the eighth time. I think Nia Jax is going to be a babyface soon enough. They, what did you think about Mandy and Dana Brooke getting in the way and stopping it happening in the in the first segment and letting it happen in the next? I mean, it was it was weird because at first they're like, "Oh, team, the team," and then it was like, "Oh, wait, she cost us the titles last week." All right, let her do it. Yeah. It was like a, uh, a mood swing almost. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it didn't make it was, a ton of sense. It was like. Yeah, it was like, you can't sit there and be like, no, 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 you know, we need to focus on the team, and then like, yeah, fuck her. She costs us the titles. Yeah, never mind. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's see. Let's see, Lana lost the one, then she lost, looks like the other one. 
Uh, psh, the Sheamus stuff, the AJ Styles and the group stuff. I thought that match was awesome. The two on two with AJ as the ref. I thought that was done really well. First off, Braun and Keith Lee is going to be an amazing match one day. We've been getting a lot of teases of it and a lot of maybes, this and that. Seeing them collide in this one I thought was awesome. But I also was laughing so much at AJ Styles. His ability to sell is so good, dude. Yeah. Every time he was getting hit by accident on someone else, he was just like falling like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Folding completely in half. Like, like completely okay. blindsided type stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> And that AJ sandwich between Braun and Keith, like, oh gosh. Yeah. Like, I would have, I would have loved if he just couldn't continue after that. Like, just bam, and then he's just like out. Yeah. Somebody moves them, and they keep fighting. <laughs> so funny, dude. It was so good, and he put a little Captain C on his ref shirt. Thought that was so good too. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, and I didn't think I would. Um, they did tease that they were going to do a moment of bliss with Drew, and they did not. And I don't know why. But the only thing we got as far as Bray and Alexa went was Alexa was in the back taking the petals off of a flower. Nikki comes over and says that she has to choose between her. She Alexa has to choose between Nikki and Bray. And mm-hmm. Alexa picks Bray, obviously, and kind of walks away. The segment was good. It was, you know, they both did a good job, I thought, but I also didn't know, like, I don't know. It wasn't quite what I was hoping, I guess. It was, seemed a little light. I was expecting, like, at least a second segment with somebody involved in that story. The other thing is, yeah. I was really hoping when Nikki was saying, this isn't a game, Alexa. I'm not playing with you. This isn't a game. I thought Alexa was going to put her hands up and show the gloves and be like, well, if you don't want to play, I only have one other choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they say play in pain. Um, yeah. Real quick, producer wants to say something. Um, they kind of teased that we're going to see Nikki in the funhouse, too. Which, yeah. is that going to be Nikki being kind of persuaded to get all crazy? Are we going to finally get crazy Nikki back? Or is it going to be Nikki fighting, trying to fight? Um, you know. Like help captive? Uh, I don't know. I, so they sort of teased that that Alexa was going to invite Nikki to the fun house, but that was also before she picked Bray over Nikki. So I don't know if it was like a tease to make you think and then something they're not going to pay off. Do you think you actually get to a point where we get Nikki inside the fun house? I mean, I think it'd be cool. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know how or really if it's necessary. I, I was, you know, and going back to the whole glove thing, I'm not going to play with you. I wanted Alexa to, you know, say, come play with me, Nikki. Come play oh, with me. That's, you know. Oh, that would have been good. Like, you know, like, I, it, it's one of those where it was like, to me, seems so perfect, and I'm just waiting for it, and it didn't happen. I was like, huh. But then at the same time, like you said, this, this segment to me felt like rush like very rushed and almost like unexpected like they did change something you yeah. know and i have no idea unless you know this is what they wanted but everything you know all the steam that they've had and stuff like that the last few weeks and then it was you know just alexa pulling flower petals off and being like nikki choose and it's like okay yeah, and I do think they actually could have gotten away with both and it had been good. Come play with me, Nikki. Nikki, come play. And then she's like, Alexa, I'm serious. I'm, it's not a game. And she goes, well, if you don't want to play, I only can do – I was like, I only get one other choice. And then you kind of go like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I think you could have gotten away with both and it would have been – I think it would have been great. I think it would have been better if she had said, come play with me, Nikki. But I also think that I still like my, my line of I can only play your – it's play your pain. These are my two things. Just like Bray is yeah. hurt and heal. And if you're going to, like, talk about a game, then I want her to talk about playing. And like you said, if you're talking about playing with Nikki, then you got to talk about playing with Nikki. Like, mm-hmm. I think they missed two boats on that. Yeah. Just boats passing in the night, like two turds down a lake. <laughs> Wait, you shit in the lake? In the lake, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, Grim Reaper said Drew bumped moment of bliss for Raw Talk. I mean, that's what it looks like. 
And he says, I think a Firefly Funhouse match like Cena and Bray would be awesome between Alexa and Nikki. Uh, I don't think Nikki has enough backstory for it to be that good. But I know what you're saying. I want to get to a point where Alexa is able to do that. It'd have to be against somebody else, though. Who does Alexa have enough history with to even do something like that? Maybe just down the line. I don't know. Go through the past memories. I would think Sasha friends. and Bailey. Sasha and Bailey could do a fun house. Uh, Alexa and Bailey actually have a lot of history. Mm-hmm. Becky and Alexa had some. But at the same time, that's what murdered Cena. So someone's got to go at the end of that. So I'm not, I don't know. I don't know, man. Does Does Alexa have history with Lana or Nia Jax? She got history with Nia Jax. Yeah. We can do <laughs> the fun house with Alexa and Nia. And then poof, Nia's gone. Boom. Yeah. I just booked us all a win. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Dude, Titus O'Neil fucking showed up. Yeah. I thought he was awesome. And I thought it would have been really I cool mean, if Titus had won. I thought that would have been huge. But yeah. no, they didn't do it. But I don't think a Titus win would have helped anyone. So what do you think is going to happen with Sammy and Bobby Lashley? I'd be more interested in Sammy and Titus O'Neil. Although Sammy and Bobby have history, you know, with his sisters yeah. and stuff. Well, and I think that's where they're going to go with that is, you know, that whole thing. And I think it's going to be Sammy running away. Uh, I think Sammy's going to do something sneaky. I think he's going to do something real sneaky and slimy. I don't know if it's going to be as, as blatant as running away, but... I hear you. I don't know what's going to be, though. Who brings in retribution? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I think Angel Garza was trying to fuck me. Did you see that promo? I started watching it, and it felt like some weird Bachelor thing, and I just walked away. Yeah, he was trying to fuck you. Oh, man, I missed it. Damn it. Yeah. You missed it. He was um, trying to fuck you. <laughs> Actually, it was the opposite. I walked in because I was watching it on my iPad. Yeah. And, you know, when the commercials play, I, like, walk away. And then I come back. And if it's something I, you know, I'll rewind 99% of the time. And then when I saw him talking and holding the rose and stuff like that, I was like, I'm not going back and watching this. <laughs> no way. Unless they bring back Val Venus to be his mentor. Yeah. Uh, Grimford says, uh, I saw him hand you the rose. See? That's what I'm saying. Garza was there, and he's all like, look, dude, I want to fuck you. I just, <laughs> just want you to know that right now. I'm looking through the rest of the show. Actually, we kind of hit it. We chopped it up the whole way through. Mm-hmm. Just hitting all the different things in there. Um, dude, I'm tired of Drew McIntyre. And then closing the show with him, yes. I was really hoping that I was going to get something at the end. Otherwise, I would have turned it off. If I knew it was going to end the way that it was, then as soon as the match started, I would have just stopped watching there. I'd have been fine. Yeah. But I was convinced by someone that Bray Wyatt was going to show up at the end and make it interesting. And that did not happen, and I felt cheated and lied to. So I called Garza and said, dude, let's chill. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got Netflix? Yeah. Garza, you got Netflix? Uh, so let's just talk about survivor series a little bit a lot of people were speculating about what's going on with the survivor series teams and i know that we talked about it in not sam's discord uh friend not friend of the show uh sam roberts has a discord i'm a patreon that we we all talk wrestling it's a good community if you like sam roberts check it out uh join his patreon also the show on the wwe network very good very good but in there, we were talking about it for like two weeks. Like, hey, is, is Lana going to go through the table and be the sole survivor at the end of Survivor Series of that match? And then someone even painted it out last night and was all like, so this is how they see it happening, that somebody puts, Nia th- or puts Lana through the table and lays out the entire match. And just when they think somebody's won it, it's again, you forgot about Lana. We all forgot about Lana. She rolls in, steals the win, and gets the win for her team. 
And then Ryan Satin tweeted today, no one wants to talk about it. Nobody's saying it, but I'm going to put it out there. What if Lana's the sole survivor? And I was like, you son of a bitch. It's Twitter wars, man. Twitter wars. But yeah, what do you think about that? First. Oh. Um, uh, I mean, I think it'd kind of be funny, but I always hate when people miss a portion of the match. Yeah, that's how uh, like, Seth Rumble. Rollins won the Rumble. Yeah, with Rumbles, I hate, hate it. I've always hated it. I think, you know, you know, we talked about it before. Is I think there needs to be a like a shot clock thing almost where if you're on the outside for so long, you're out with it. Yeah. You can't come weaseling back in 45 minutes later and be like, Oh look, I won. Yeah. And then for them to be like, Oh wow. He was in for this long. No, he was in for 10 minutes and he spent 45 minutes laying on the table and then came in for the last 10 minutes. Dude. Remember how pissed I was getting the year that Jericho broke the record for longest time in the rumble. Mm Mm-hmm. Remember I was at your house yelling at how he was such a piece of shit. And I was like, he's literally laying down outside. And after a while, he wasn't even laying down, obviously, anymore. He was just sitting in the corner with his arm on the ring apron watching the match. And you're like, he's been out there for 20 fucking minutes, dude. And then for him to, like, walk around afterwards. And maybe it was a heel shit thing to do or not. I don't think so. I think it's just his fucking ego at this point. Just trying to say, I have the record for the longest amount of time in a Royal Rumble. And knowing full well, he broke it from Ray, who stayed in the fucking match the whole time. It's like, fuck you, dude. Mm. Whatever, man. Roman's sleeping, you said? But even... Fuck, dude, and then when... I think, who was it? Well, Daniel, Daniel Bryan, Bryan broke that record? Yeah. And he was in there the in whole the fucking time. world's largest. Yeah. 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 Dude, remember that was when his chest looked like hamburger meat? Oh, Yeah. It was, it was disgusting. like hamburger helper. Yeah. It was absolutely disgusting. And then, and then I remember Jericho complaining about that. And he goes, well, if, it, if they didn't have to add time to the clock, you know, and you're just like, dude, dude he's so mad. He's so fucking mad, dude. Pisses me off so bad. Uh, let's see. Anything happening in Survivor Series that you're particularly excited for? I think Sasha Asuka will be nice again, but I don't know that I'm thinking yeah. that's like the one. Yeah, I don't know. None of the matches that's feel the thing, like big matches, dude. But that's the way Survivor Series has been. And I think yeah. that's another reason why they might flip the belt to Drew because they're going to be like, oh, look at your top guy versus our top guy right now or our most popular guy and stuff. And it's going to be like, Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they say the best one... of the best. Like That's what they're trying to say. It's the best of the best. But Bailey's not in it, so it's not. Yeah, she's not in it at all, cause, right? As of right now, yeah. 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 There's rumors right. she might join the SmackDown team. Because yeah, SmackDown, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, that. that'd be cool. The only, the only way, truthfully, you know, going back to the whole Roman and Drew thing, or Miz in your case, mm-hmm. I think I think that's when Miz cashes in. After Drew versus Roman. Dude, can you Roman imagine on him. if Roman tr- fucking beat down Drew like he beat down Jay? That would be next I mean, level, I would, dude. I I would like it. I would love it. Do it. I would love it. I'd be losing my mind. Yes! I'd be like running all over the house. I would look like a whole bunch of different memes and stuff. Like that one with the kid who got his hands on his face. Like, oh! I'm so uh, excited. <laughs> So then you can even have Jay, you know, after the match, hit him again, do this, do this, you know, Roman ordering him, and then Drew's just out there, and then here comes Sneaky Miz. Yeah. That could be good. I'd be down for that. But then, I'm really okay with that. Yeah. But I, I just don't want Randy to be a spot holder, basically. And at this point, it was like, well, why switch it if it wasn't for something bigger? Yeah, and that's 100% what right. I was thinking. That's why I think that I think the only way that Orton loses it is if it goes to someone like Miz because I think they want to protect Drew so much. They don't want Drew losing it to Miz, but they also don't want Drew and Roman together yet. 
That's how I feel. So that's why I think it's got to go to Miz because Orton can believably take it off of Drew and it doesn't hurt Drew because of their because of their battle and Drew fighting through a broken jaw, which looks stupid. And then and Miz cashing in. Yeah. yeah, needing a dozen legends to help him cheat to win. But then I think with Randy, he wouldn't lose any any of that aura of Randy. He's he's a legend. You and he's fucking good. He's the one of the greatest of all time. And I think that that it could potentially hurt Drew to lose the title to someone else, but it wouldn't hurt Randy to get screwed out of the title the same way it would hurt Drew. So I think I think that's why we either leave it on Randy because like you said, bigger things to come or it's got to go to someone like Miz. But I do think that the transition to get the title off of Drew was strictly because of Survivor Series. Yeah. Unless, you know, unless it was just to get him to 14th and then, you know, down the line at Mania, maybe he gets it back. back and then all of a sudden he's one short of Cena and uh, Claire while surpassing Triple H. Yeah. I think it's possible, man. I think all this stuff's possible. Um, I don't think I had much else to talk about on Raw or SmackDown, really. Was there anything else you had on those? No, just... Oh, Grim had a question yeah, for just... us. What's up? Ray still has the longest time in the Royal Rumble, 62 minutes, 12 seconds. Jericho was 16, 13. But Daniel Bryan is recognized for the greatest Royal Rumble at 76, 05. Uh, damn, that was a long time. Jericho spent fucking forty-five minutes on the outside. I'll I'll dare you to time it. Um, but yeah, okay, yeah. Ray and and Dana Bryan are the only ones I recognize on that list. The other name doesn't make any sense to me. Well, does was it that Jericho was getting close to breaking Ray? That's what we were pissed at. I think so. I think that's what it was. He was getting close. I remember being pissed because I also remember them talking. I was like, oh, what's he at? What's he at? And I'm like, it's been 45 minutes. And I was like, it has not. Because he, he wasn't in the <laughs> ring for so much of it. If you figure yeah. out which rumble it was, because I want to say it was like 2016 or 2015 or something. If you watch it back, Jericho spends the majority of that match on the outside of the ring in the corner looking mm. over. And it's fucking infuriating. But, yeah, I don't think I had a lot else on Survivor Series or the 24-7 title. Did you have anything else? 24-7 title. Yeah. I'm not a fan of what um, about it. I'm not either. At this point, I'm... I don't want to say dissolve it because, I mean, it's getting their... Not even mid-card, you know, the low-card guys... You know, some TV time. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I was really excited when they put it on uh, Eric from Viking Raiders. I was too. I thought. I wanted. I, yeah, I was legitimately, ahead. like, yelling at him, like, run away, stupid. Run away. Like, just go. I, I was hoping that he would stand there and play King of the Mountain. You know what I mean? Where he just like stood there and just like would flying knee everybody like he did in Raw Underground. Mm-hmm. I was hoping he was going to be but like think... a vicious guy who held onto it for a long time. Yeah. The commentators was even like, I don't know why he's celebrating or something like that. And I was like, uh, I don't know why, yeah. but I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> uh, let's see. But I, I think that's it, man. I think that's all I got. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, there's only one other thing I got, but I think that's it on, on all that stuff. Is there anything else that you thought that we missed that you want to talk about? No. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is that we got Veteran Days coming up. It is our Veterans Day episode today, and we did want to send out a big cheers to all of our veterans out there, wrestling and otherwise, and our very own producer lady who is a veteran herself fighting for our freedoms, both foreign and domestic. And she reminds me every time I mouth off, she goes, I could destroy you. I was trained to kill. I go, Oh yeah, that's right. Never mind. It's no wonder I shit my pants on the regular. (laughs) 
But I think that's everything, guys. I think that's our show. Cheers to the veterans. Cheers. Cheers to our very own veteran producer lady. Hold on. I think. Another sip. All right. Yep. Yep. Uh, check us out. WrestlingOnTheRocks.com, twitch.tv slash WrestlingOnTheRocks for our live stream and chat. Uh, tell all your friends and family to prime subscribe because once we hit 50 subscribers, we're going to give away a signed AJ Styles comic book. Uh, thank you for your service, Grim Reaper says to producer. Um, all of our handles are on there. You can find me at Ref Marsh on Twitter. You can find Kevlar at Kevlar on the Rocks with an X on Twitter yes. as well, where he is constantly posting. Got to keep up with his feed. Too, too much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Too much, I mean, almost. It's a, it's a full-time job. Yeah, it feels full-time. It feels full-time <laughs> for sure. Guys, that's last call. We're resting on the rocks. Cheers. Cheers.